So now the battle seems to be against Starbucks. Now you're fighting a corporation, you're fighting a building. It says Starbucks coffee is anti-black. <laughs> when are you guys gonna get it? I and mean, we go in there, we're gonna chant and we're gonna protest and it's gonna die all the way back down. And some of you guys who participate in Starbucks gonna be out there participating in Starbucks. Me personally, I don't go there, so I couldn't boycott what I don't actually go. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's like telling me to boycott alcohol. Well, I don't drink, so it don't make a difference to me anyway. But you're still doing the same old thing. You're marching, you're protesting. It wasn't Starbucks that calls the cop. It was the employee, a person, an individual with their own racial biases. You, 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 you're not connecting the dots. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, the African-American man who didn't get to use a restroom in Starbucks. And see that lady, she's not European. You see, the ideology is what you're fighting. Let's look up the word ideology real quick. Ideology is a system of ideas or ideals, especially that that forms a basic, sorry, basis of economic or political theory and policy. Hmm. The science of ideas, the study of their origin and nature. That's what you're studying. Ideas. How did they get this, these ideas about African people, black people, whatever you want to identify yourself as? They get it from the media and whatever we post or they post and they formulate their opinion. That's what it's called to be prejudice, to prejudge. Okay? Until America gets serious about race and discrimination or whatever have you, these type of altercations will keep happening and happening and happening. And what would be our response? To march, to protest, to get upset. But you see, that's the difference what the elders were talking about, especially Kwame Ture. You must know the difference between organization and mobilization. You must know the difference. The difference is clear. Remember this young lady here with the Rachel uh, when she went in there to buy a bag? Well, now she's winning $525,000 in racial profile and settlement. Now, again, that was a lawsuit that benefits her. Great. This other fellow, right? Remember him with um, the belt? He was going to buy a belt. And he was uh, racially profiled also, stopping frisk by the New York, New York uh, Police Department. Okay. Those are incidents. But if marching and protesting was going to fix that, why are we still having to deal with it in 2018? Those cases, I think, happened in 2013 or 15, somewhere in there. But years ago so if marching and protesting was gonna fix a problem why are you still dealing with it today you're fighting against ideologies why don't you ever say you know what we don't need their stuff at Barney's let's create our own we don't need Starbucks coffee let's create our own the coffee is coming out of Africa anyway why not make partnerships no 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 that's too much work it's much easier to march and protest when we feel we've been mistreated. So our goal is to be accepted. Our goal is to make sure everyone likes us because I know I hear a lot of you guys saying they don't like us. So you still have this elementary idea about the world. They don't like us. And then here comes the talking heads. White supremacy and race soldier, man. Don't y'all get tired of saying crap over and over and over? I know what the game is about, the white supremacy, because that's how those make their money. They make the money off of telling you all the boogeyman, white supremacy, and get you all riled up. But you don't think. How do you combat an ideology? I keep asking you the same question. It's like America fighting the terrorists. You're fighting a war on terrorism. What? How? You can't. It's like I'm living in an alternate reality or something. I can see it clear as day, and I know some of you can see it clear as day also. But we get the same old talking his, everybody's saying the same thing white supremacy, and this is just the right. Well, let me ask you a question, man. I'm gonna ask the same question I've been asking again. Where do you go to buy your food? Your medicine, which is really poison, but where you go to buy your medicine to tell you you need to take? Where do you go to see the doctor? Who is your doctor? 
Where do you work at? Are you work on these so-called quote unquote white supremacy corporations? Because if you do, and you have this white supremacy ideology going on in your brain, I'm talking about you African people, then you have a big contradiction going on because you, you're fighting against the system, but while participating in the system, not because you want to, but because you have to. The difference is clear. You need the system to survive. The system does not need you to survive. You might think, oh, no, no, that's not true. That's not true. No, it is true. last year. We must make clear distinctions between mobilizers and organizers. To be an organizer, you must be a mobilizer. But being a mobilizer doesn't make you an organizer. Much confusion is to be found here. Malcolm X was a great mobilizer. He was a great organizer. Martin Luther King was a great mobilizer. He was not a great organizer. These facts can be easily seen from King and Malcolm. When Malcolm went to a place, he left a mosque. When King went to demonstrations, he broke down desegregation and he moved on. As a matter of fact, King was not concerned with organization to the point that even though he was the most popular Baptist preacher in America without the shadow of a doubt, and probably beyond the shadow of a doubt the most loved, he could not become president of the Baptist, National Baptist Association, convention. Yeah, so many of them. The National Baptist Convention. <laughs> As a matter of fact, if my memory serves me correctly now, and I remember it was Mohammed Speaks that uh, carried the article on the front page in 1964 when King tried to become president of the National uh, Baptist Convention, there was so much confusion there that a minister was actually put, pushed off the stage and died in the struggle. Yeah. And of course, King lost. The man who won was a reactionary man by the name of Jackson. He never did nothing for the people, never cared about the people, just was a pork chop minister who used their money to put gas in his big Cadillac. But he was organized. 
but he was organized we say that we must come to know the difference between mobilization and organization because the enemy will use mobilization to demobilize us. Mobilization is very easy. Very, very easy. Because since we're people who are instinctively ready to respond against acts of injustice, anytime there's one little act of injustice, we can blow it up and we'll find people who come and make some mass demonstration around it. Miss Sally lost her job. Let's rally. She got her job back. People will come and rally. So and so got kicked out of school because the teachers are unjust. The unjust, the people who come and rally, they will come to rally at issues. And this is what mobilization does. It mobilizes people around issues. Those of us who are revolutionary are not concerned with issues. We are concerned with the system. The difference must be properly understood. The difference must be properly understood. Mobilization usually leads for reform action, not to revolutionary action. If we would look scientifically at the October 16th million and more march, we would see clearly that this was a mobilized event, not an organized event. We must know clearly the difference between mobilization and organization. One of the characteristics of mobilization is that it is temporary. Organization is permanent and eternal. Clear differences must be made because the unconscious can usually be captured easily around one issue items, around mobilization items, but it's hard to catch them around organization. But these unconscious must be brought to organization. We must transform mobilization to organization. We say the enemy will come and use mobilization to demobilize us. Many brothers and sisters who've been to the Million and More March will say to you, I was there. Well, what are you doing today, my sister? I was there. There weren't too many sisters out there, but you know, with a million brothers together, you know where I had to be. I was there. Yes. <laughs> and then, of course, you find brothers. Yeah, I was there. I was there. I helped you. What are you doing today, brother? If we're not careful, we allow mobilization to become events. The struggle is never an event. It's a process, a continual, eternal process. We say it is our job to use mobilization to drive us to organization. You know our theme is organization. We want power. We don't want money. We don't want fame. We don't want fortune. We don't want popularity. We want power. Power. And power comes only from the organized masses. Power comes only from the organized masses. 